My name is Dorothy Abbott and I'm a wood hoarder. I've been hoarding wood for about 10 years. I don't know that this is actually a good way to solve my hoarding problem, but I have at least found a use for some of these thin scraps that I can't seem to throw away. And that is to turn my scraps into a profit by making wood inlays for cutting boards, trim, the edges of tables, what have you. So I'm going to show you how we make some simple inlays. Um, it's my first time doing this, but I studied up on a bit and it's really not that hard. It just takes patience and a little bit of precision. In another video, I made a planing jig that allows me to take wood down from anything from three quarters of an inch down to super thin consistencies all the way across. That's essential to have these pieces planed off at an even thickness. The first step is to create your strips of wood. I'm going to use about two and a quarter inches wide, partially because that fits e easily into my planing jig and also because that's going to allow me to make a lot of pieces of this inlay. There are a number of different things that I can do. On this one in particular, I'm going to make kind of a zigzag pattern for the inlay. This one, I have a sandwich that I'm going to make first using these pieces of walnut, maple, uh, walnut veneer, maple, and walnut. Now I'll just glue those together, clamp them to the edge of the table with a board on top to make sure it's good and solid. point I'm just getting some of these outside layers. This side you can tell from the card scraper has glue on it. I need to go until I get a full width all the way across. It's smooth, it's square, it's jointed. You can check for square with a small square by bringing it down to the edge, looking through for light. And if there's light on either side, then I know I need to do a little bit more work. And now that I have this edge smoothed down, I can cut the other edge off on the table saw. I want to make sure it's the same width across. Raise the blade just above the height of the board. And since my width is two and a quarter, I want to take off just a tiny bit. I'll take off a sixteenth. So I have this set at two and three sixteenths. That'll enable me to just trim just the edge of this board. Always wear safety equipment and have a push stick that's going to keep your hands clear away on hand. I also have a nice little rabbit, this is a mouse, push stick for a thinner stock like this. This inlay banding looks just fine, but I wanted something a little bit varied. So to start with, I'll, be, I'll just make all kinds of angled cuts, 45 degrees along the edge of this. Okay, so I made this fancy cutting jig, but when I went to check for the squareness of my cut, remember this is pretty much precision work, it's off ever so slightly. And what I found out is that, as you might suspect, when you have a piece vertically against uh, a fence like this, 
there can be a little bit of a tendency for it to rock just a tiniest a bit and any kind of a discrepancy like that with this um, doing the inlay banding can make a huge difference I have to have this square so it's going to be best to lay it down flat so what I'm going to do is recut it I've set my table to 45 degrees setting a sliding bevel gauge first to 45 degrees and ensuring that my blade lines up to 45. Okay. So you can see how angled this first cut is. It's really nowhere where it needs to be. And this should clear it up. And I'm gonna cut it this way so I waste less material. I've also made sure that my fence is lined up square with the edge. It's still not square for some reason. It's pretty important that you make sure that your table is square with your saw blade and that the 45 is correct before you start on this project. I had, uh, I had to realign my table just a tiny, tiny bit. It wasn't quite square. You want to make sure that you have it completely square on the top and that that 45 degree angle is spot on. Once you have that set, we're ready to go. I want each of my pieces to be 3 eighths of an inch long at the cut. So I've marked from the end where uh, that 3 eighths of an inch comes. I'll line that up with the top of the blade where it's going to cut through, looking carefully that when it cuts through, it's not going to be cutting into that line, but it'll cut right at it. And uh, I, by setting the stop block here, I should be able to easily repeat exactly that same cut, just butting my piece up against the stop block. Making inlay banding consists largely of gluing boards together, cutting them apart and gluing them together in different ways to make different patterns to make new boards. We started out with a simple straight line design. I've cut those into angles. Now I'm going to show you how I can get two different kinds of patterns out of that same angled cut. The first is kind of a candy stripe or barbershop type pattern where everything's at an angle alternating colors. Now, obviously, I've got a thin stripe in between two uh, maple pieces with uh, walnut on the outside edges, and then I, that pattern is going to repeat. Walnut, maple, walnut, maple, walnut, walnut, maple, and so on. But if I was going to do just a normal pattern, I would make it so that my sandwiched layer doesn't have the repeated walnut layers on the outside. Here we have the candy stripe pattern where I've just taken each piece from the original board and tipped them on their side. So the original board was like this all the way along. And by tipping them on their side, I end up with a diagonal candy stripe pattern. It might be more pleasing to actually sandwich this layer then between, for example, two pieces of cherry that would um, kind of set it off nicely. Now what I'm going to be doing for my design is I'll take each row and alternate them. I need to set them on edge where I'm alternating so that I get a zigzag pattern like this. So I'm going to lay this all out the way I want it to go together first so I don't make any mistakes and then I'll transfer it to my tape. Uh, also on these edges, I want to get this sanded off where it's a little bit rough so that doesn't interfere with my glue up. So lining everything up against this backboard ensures that everything stays straight in line. Putting it down on the table itself and putting it on the sticky tape helps it stay in place a little bit. So I'm going to start not with this first one because I want it to be this angle. 
And with this pattern being as intricate as it is, um, it's best just to glue a few together to make sure everything's lined up and glue sections of those together afterwards. I can pretty much line it up, stick it together, know it's going to stick, and then set it down on my tape. Clothes pins make a nice light clamp that hopefully will fit over this and not quite. Just kind of helps squeeze that together while the glue sets up. Let it dry for the appropriate amount of time, in this case overnight. This top block keeps everything pressed down nice and tight. And I have this other clamp pressing in against this stop block over here to ensure that everything stays together there. I'm essentially going to be cutting through it all the way across with the cut line going just at the top of each of these center marks here all the way across.